Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to share how to be rich, wealthy and retire early. Fantastic strategy. I'm using this strategy right now. I'm using, I'm implementing. It's really, really helping me and I'm looking forward to retiring as soon as possible. Okay, so this is the strategy that I would like you to actually look at and implement. Lots of people work ridiculous long hours. They never had time to actually sit back and plan their life to understand that how they really or when they really want to retire. So again, this video would, would kind of um, help you start thinking about that and then obviously take action and implementing what you uh, want to do to achieve financial freedom and retire early. So you can spend more time with, with your loved ones. You can go traveling. You can leave the house. You, you can live in the house you want. You could spend the time with whoever you want to spend with. You could then actually do whatever you want at the time you want it instead of waiting for your work or for or, or for your manager to um, give you um, the the actual um, the 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 actual opportunity to do whatever you want to do in life. So again, this video is very very nice. It's a very educational videos. I I'm, I'm literally asking you to please implement it to um, change your life. So let's get to it. But before we get going, if you like this video or any of my videos, don't forget to hit the like button below, subscribe to my YouTube channel for more of these videos. Let's get to it. So as I said, lots of people just get busy and busy and busy working. They never had time for themselves. But today, I hope you, this video would help you, enlighten you to be able to um, uh, plan yourself to, to be rich, wealthy and retire early. There are, these are seven steps. The number one step is pay yourself for first. What do I mean by pay yourself first? You have to pay yourself first when you've got your pay slip. Okay, very important. There's so many people out there, they literally spend the money before they get it or they leave paycheck to paycheck only because they are not planning on what to do with the money once they've received it. So what I advise you to do, if you're earning 2,000 pounds, for example, save 10% of that 2,000 pounds. Suppose if save 10% a month from the 2,000 pounds, that is 200 pounds every single month. So what you do, you put that money aside. Whatever is left over, you could use that for your expenses, for your family commitment, whatever you wanna use it for, but you have to pay yourself first. Successful people do this. I do this myself. I pay myself first before I pay anybody else. So implement the same thing. I'm and I will tell you it will change your life and it will really really take you to the next level and you will see the value of money of money in a different form. Number two, increase your income. What do I mean by increase your income? If you're working for a company on a salary basis, ask if there's any other additional task you could do. Could be helping a friend at work. It could be working extra hours um, to be able to bank these hours and then able to, for the company to pay you these banked hours as a, in a form of a wage or something like that. So always find a way you could have additional income. It could be a part-time job after work. It could be maybe be being an, uh, an Uber driver, for example, in your spare time, right? And again, for being an Uber driver, you don't really have to uh, work in a specific hours. You, you can literally clock in and clock out as and when you need. And again, that's an additional income. So what you do, the additional income you make from work or from your Uber or, or from your Uber or from working elsewhere, save that money, put it on top of your 10%. Okay, put it on top of your 10%. Suppose that additional work you've done generates you about say 200 pounds a month. So 200 pounds plus the other 200 pounds you would have saved, that is 400 pounds every month. I'll tell you that now, 80% of the UK population is not able to save 400 pounds a month. So if you're on 400 pounds a month of savings, you are absolutely doing amazing. So try to get additional work so you can save for the future and that way then you'll have a chunk of money ready for when the right deal comes. Number three, cut your expenses, right? Don't buy things that you don't need, right? Two ways to cut your expenses. Number one is by going through your bank account, look at the direct debit. Cut out any subscription that you're not using. It could be Sky, Sky subscription. If you're not watching football every single day, cut the subscription out, take the football part of it out. Um, if it's not, if you, if, you, if you don't have time to do that, take, take it out. If you're not watching it, what's the point of having it? Number two, if you have Netflix, if you're not using the Netflix every day, if you're not watching it, take it out because it's not adding any value to you, okay? Or if you have um, Amazon Prime, for example, if you have Amazon Prime and you're not using the Amazon Prime, don't have the subscription, right? I know it's about $7.99, but if you're not using it, why have it? 
right? If you're having it because you're buying stuff online, ask yourself, how many times do I buy stuff online, right? If you buy stuff three or four times a year, it's not worth having, right? It's not worth having, right? You, you could have free posts these days, right? So it's not really worth having the Amazon Prime if you're not buying stuff there every single month. If you're buying every single month, I understand that, but I advise you not to be buying things in Amazon every single month. So if you don't need it, cut it out. Take it off. If you don't need it, take it off because it's not adding any value to yourself. And if you have any other subscriptions that, that you're not using, right, take it off. If it's not adding anything in you, take it off. If you, if you have, say, a broadband subscription that are really, really high and you hardly use the internet, go and renegotiate. See if you can get a lower um, bandwidth or if you can get a lower drip below to what you have now so that you save that money, especially if you're not using it. Right. So again, these are the sort of things you need to look for to ensure that you actually save money. These are small monies, but it all adds up at the end of the day. And the, the, the second way also to do is to look at the stuff that you buy. List all the stuff you buy. Right. Watch them. Um, observe the list for like every two days. Look at it the second day and see if you really need some of the items. Right. If you don't really need it, then you just have to strike it out. Right. And then you keep the same list. Wait for a couple of days again, go and have a look at that list and see if there's anything you need there. If you really, really don't need the other stuff, just, just strike it out. Strike it out and then another day you go and watch until a week basically. And then you will then see what are the exact stuff that, that you need. If the stuff that you need then is very important and you need them to actually maintain your life, then you can go and buy those stuff. That's, the, that's how I started, that's what I do and I, and I still do these things. To today, today I, ha I, I almost don't have any subscriptions about, apart from subscriptions that add value to me and my family's life. So, and again, it's very important to actually look at the subscription and buy stuff that you actually need. There's no point to buy um, uh, to, to, to buy trainers for to um, say trainers that work 250 pounds or say 300 pounds to impress people that hardly see you again. So again, it's very, very important for you to cut all those non-necessary expenses that don't really add value only because um, uh, you want to impress people. I've worked to some, I work, I walked into some houses. You, when you walk into the sitting room, the first thing you notice is the TV. Some of them got 80 to 120 inches TV, right? When I, when, when I usually ask them about TV, they said to me, oh, I don't even watch it every day. So if you don't watch it every day, why spend thousand pounds in it? Why spend 2000 pounds in it? Or why spend even 500 pounds in something that you don't even watch? And again, the TV mostly give us negative news anyway. So cut all this stuff. Don't do stuff to, 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 to um, impress someone else. Do stuff to impress yourself. Do stuff that can add value to yourself, right? Don't try to keep up with the Joneses, okay? Be yourself, you know, live below your means to ensure you're able to invest the remaining balance. It doesn't mean your friend bought a nice car. You can go and buy another nice car just to compete with him. No, don't keep up with him. You know, we are all different. We all have different aims and objectives, okay? There's a, there's a very good book that I would recommend you to read, The Millionaire Next Door. You can see um, there's so many people that are wealthy and millionaires, you will never know they're millionaires because what they do, they may have a crappy car or they live in a small house and they're saving, they're saving, investing all their money. So when you see them, you, you'll be thinking, oh, they're just normal people. Some of these people are wealthy. They've got so much money that they've saved and investing passively that you don't know about. So again, don't judge people by their appearances or thinking um, they, are, they, 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 they are really poor. And again, don't see someone by driving expensive cars thinking, wow, what sort of job is this guy doing? He must be earning a lot. He may be working for that car or he may be working for that house. Again, don't do what everybody is doing. Just try to ensure what you're expending is below your means so you don't go over your expenses. And then whatever is left over, you can then save for um, rainy days. Okay, number four, make your money work for you. Make your money work really, really hard for you. What do I mean by that? The um, paying ourselves first, right? Increasing our income, right? By saving 200 pounds. Suppose we had 200 pounds for our additional work, that's 400 pounds. And if you would, if you would add cut our expenses, that gives us about 100 pounds extra. So we are on 500 pounds. So if you would save that money for, 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 for say, 
few months or so we would have had enough money probably to um, put our put on to buy a house so if you if, you, if you're really ruthless about savings if you're able to save maybe a year or two and you're able to put aside twenty five thousand pounds what you could do you could use that twenty five thousand pounds buy yourself an investment property buy yourself a buy to let property that you could rent out to a to, to a family and if you buy yourself a buy to let property or a family property to rent out in average you'll make about three hundred pounds every single single month okay making 300 pounds every single month that means you're making that money without doing anything right you make that money without doing anything without working for it you're not working to earn that money that's what we call passive income some people call it residual income okay so these are the sort of things you need to be thinking about when you are investing in your property journey so if you've got that and again it's a great benefit to you as well you don't have to do anything to get that money and the good news the good thing about investing in property is also you get paid twice you get paid by the tenant right because the tenant pays you your rent and with that rent you pay down your debt as well because the tenant will be paying for the mortgage that you take take on number two if property prices goes up guess what your property price goes up as well and then you can make money that way that's what we call capital appreciation so vital important to invest in buy to let to ensure you've got a residual income but again try to educate yourself first to understand that you know what you're doing before you invest your twenty five thousand pounds okay number five ensure your income what do I mean by insure your income? Take personal insurance, for example, to protect you and your family should anything goes wrong, okay? It may be, um, you may be thinking that's an expense. Trust me, it's a very worth investment to do because obviously if, if you insure your income, if anything goes wrong, you've got the insurance to cover that cost. Suppose you bought a buy to let property, maybe a caught fire or something drastic happened to, to that property. If you've got insurance, the insurance will cover you and then obviously help you either rebuild the property again or compensate you for any cost you may incur. So again, vital important to ensure your income, to ensure that there's no issues when everything goes wrong. And again, make your money work hard for you. I've given the example already. Invest in properties, whatever we've saved from our expenses, for, from our additional work and from our income, we use that money to buy properties and then we generate income that, that way, meaning then we don't have to work to get that money. So again, make it work a lot harder. Look for the best property investment strategy that can give you the better return than any other property investment strategy out there. Again, that's how you could make your money work a bit harder for you whilst you're doing whatever you want to do. And then, and then obviously protect yourself from losing money. Vital important, protect yourself from losing money. And the, the reason why this is, this is so important is suppose you have 20% um, return on investment and you lose 10%. So if you lose 10% out of that 20%, you are, you are at 10%. So you have to have another 20% right, to start making profit. Right, so if you lose 10%, you have to have 10%, another extra 10% to um, break even, and another 10% to be able to make profit. So protect your wealth. So how do we do this? We buy things at discount. We buy things that we could add value to. Right, suppose you're a property investor, you can go and negotiate a 100,000 pounds property and buy it at 80,000, 75,000, or even 85,000. You're getting yourself discount. You've got 15%, 10%, 5%, whatever the discount is, it's absolutely amazing because what that means, you're making money from the day you buy the property because you saved yourself 5% or 10%. Again, that's how you do it. Or look for properties that you could add value to. Suppose it's a property that is a rundown property that needs heavy renovation or needs re renovation or properties that you can add an extra bedroom to or you can have add an extension you've added that value and guess what when you remortgage that property the price would have gone up and then obviously you'll be able to attract a better rental income in that sort of property as, as well so put your protect yourself to ensure you don't lose money in your um, investment number seven give back absolutely amazing thing one of the best way of getting rich and wealthy is giving back when you give back when you serve people you get abundant return right give back more than you receive always serve people help them physically morally financially however way you want to support people support them suppose you learn property investment get a brother get a friend get someone that you could train coach 
um, to, to actually learn so you can help them fish instead of uh, actually buying the fish for them. Vitally important. And then if you've got charities, give back to your charity, give back to your churches, to your mosque or to your synagogue or to whatever cause that you would like to give back to. Give, give, give back to those causes. It would absolutely help you change your, change your life and it would reward you handsomely. All the people that I see that give back get more than what they've gave back. So again, spend your time to um, give back. Don't say I'll wait until I get enough money to be able to give back to charity or don't say I will wait, in, I'll wait until I become a millionaire before I start helping my, um, my um, community. So always, always try to give back. When you give back, you get more than what you gave back. I really hope this video has been helpful to you and it has shined a light on, uh, on how you could start your um, property investment journey and also how you could be rich, wealthy and retire early. And if you implement these seven steps, I guarantee you success and I guarantee you to be to uh, re retire early because this would absolutely change your mind. It's a simple formula. If you implement it, you would see a massive difference in your life. I'm running a, pre -property, a free property investment crash course every month. If you want to join me in my next free property investment crash course, click on the link in the description below to register yourself for completely free. So you can spend the whole day with me where I share the most recent property strategies investors are taking advantage of to make ridiculous amount of money. And again, if you want to book a strategic call with me, I'm offering free 30 minute strategic call where you could call me, ask me anything about properties. And if there's anything we could help you with also to, um, to actually start or scale your business, we'd be happy to help you with that as well. And also, um, I'm inviting you to spend a day with me in a form of discovery day where we can go through your business plan, we could strategize which strategy fits you and how we could use the resources you have now to invest in um, property. I really, really hope you like this video. If you like this video or any of my videos, hit the like button below, subscribe to my YouTube channel for more of this video. I look forward to sharing the next videos. Thank you so much for listening.